one, we're looking at the menus with crafting. We're making sure that there's uh, a smaller amount in that so I can visually look at that menu and say, OK, you know, these are the things that I want instead of trying to parse through and figure out what's going on. Uh, two, we're just cutting a lot of the food. There's a lot of food that just doesn't have as much value. Hello, and welcome to Forged in Eterno, the show where we talk all things New World. My name is Patrick. I'm joined today by Tony and Joel. And we're here to talk about a topic that's really bad to be talking about during lunchtime because I'm already hungry, but the cooking trade skill. Uh, we're going to work towards simplifying it. We want to walk you through what that means and what our plans are for that. Um, so to kind of take a few steps back, Tony, can you give me a little look into like the history of the cooking trade skill? Yeah. Where it's been and where it's going? Absolutely. So uh, first off, I love cooking in game, not real life. I mean, I'm okay, but anyway, uh, I'm a huge fan of cooking and uh, it's one of my favorite trade skills in New World. And so when we were taking a look at what we wanted to do for the trade skill and, and where it came from, we have currently in game uh, a plethora of options. We have our, all of the split stat foods. We have all the different tiers for uh, your gathering foods. Uh, we have all the different tiers for your crafting foods. Um, and there's just honestly just a ton of stuff. Now, after uh, we've kind of analyzed and seen players play and understand what players like to use and what they need to do and, and what they really go for, that's kind of what kicked off this question of like, what can we do to simplify this, make it a little bit more straightforward without really losing anything out of the game? Um, as y'all are more than aware, our recipe lists and our crafting stations are only getting longer and longer and longer. Uh, and so we really want to take some time to honestly clean up a little bit of debt and, and simplify those things back down so we can continue to add content without performance concerns and anything else as these lists get to be exceptionally long. Yeah, absolutely. And cooking is a trade skill that I think has a lot of fantasy alongside it. Yes. That fantasy of combining all these ingredients you're out there harvesting and buying to make yes. these unique foods. We don't want to lose that alongside this. Uh, we just want to help make the trade skill a little leaner and simplify our inventories a little bit. So we've talked about that with the expansion shipping. Uh, one of our goals with some of the loot reduction was to make that inventory management a little easier for players because playing inventory sim is not the most engaging part of our game. Uh, how do we want to accomplish that with the cooking simplification? Yeah, so that's a good question. Ultimately, um, one, we're looking at the menus with crafting. We're making sure that there's uh, a smaller amount in that so I can visually look at that menu and say, OK, you know, these are the things that I want instead of trying to parse through and figure out what's going on. Uh, two, we're just cutting a lot of the food. There's a lot of food that just doesn't have as much value. Um, I can go get a piece of food with con or Dex, and it's far more valuable than a dual stat one because it's really hard to make a lot of those work easily compared to just having a single stat and choosing what I want there. Um, so ultimately, we're pairing a lot of those out, which you'll see a lot less in your inventory, which I can go back as, say, a returning player comes, they're looking at their inventory, what are all these foods, which one do I want? Being able to consolidate a lot of that really helps. Again, uh, you mentioned um, there's a lot of fantasy of going out and getting those different ingredients, so we want to keep some of that. I still think there's room to cut, but we'll debate some of that later, um, and that might be in the future. But right now, it's really consolidating the volume of the food, how many items you can craft while still making the trade skill feel viable and valuable. Um, so there's just a lot of dual stat stuff that we're cutting out, which ends up being a lot, and Tony's got numbers for that later, of how much we actually cut from those items, as well as the crafting menu, which I think is important too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, somewhere, someone is watching this going, oh no, that focus strength food really let me achieve my perfect build. How am I going to achieve that now? Uh, one note that's important to consider, and I don't think we're ready to talk about that with this video, but we do have some big magnified changes coming in season five, mm -hmm. which will let make the attribute selection across the board getting that perfect build a lot easier too. So okay. for those of you worried, we've considered all that. It's going to be handled. So Joel just talked to us about how we're going to be cutting down a lot of food. So mm -hmm. I have that focus strength food I just mentioned sitting in my inventory. Yes. What happens to it? Yes. Uh, you don't have to worry about us just taking a bunch of stuff away. And this goes for any food that you may have created, any physical uh, recipes that you may have in your inventory as well. Basically, what uh, we've done is we've gone through. And if you had a, a primary focus with secondary strength, that is a tier three, that's going to get converted over to a tier three focus food. So whatever the primary stat was for that food, it's just going to get converted into the pure version of that food. That goes for both the uh, food itself that's been crafted, as well as um, any of the physical recipes that you have to, to learn these items. Uh, if you happen to have an item on the uh, trade post and it's for sale when this happens, uh, the trade post listing will get canceled. It will get sent back to you as the new item and then you can do with it what you see fit. So you're not going to lose any of those. Uh, will you lose access to being able to craft 
uh, focus dex food. Yes, you will lose you will lose access to being able to craft that. That is kind of the whole point of simplifying this stuff down. Uh, but any of those physical items that you've already made, you will have those converted over in your inventory. Awesome. That sounds great to me. My Cutlass Keys inventory is going to thank you because <laughs> that is a mess to scroll through right now. So I'm it looking is. forward to that. Yeah, it should really help. You know, we have the, uh, I think it's 500 unique item limits and storages. Yep. Converting all these things down is going to give people a little bit more headroom if they want to have a whole bunch of different food. They won't need to have as much. Uh, and this just doesn't, this just isn't limited to the split staff food. Uh, tier two through four gathering food, and I believe tier two through four crafting foods, those have been removed as well. And if you had a uh, tier two mining food, you will now have a tier five mining food. Uh, the level requirement for consuming tier five uh, gathering and uh, trade skill foods has been reduced from 60 down to 15. So the main goal there was again, simplification, but to, to be completely honest, a tier two mining food didn't give you a yeah. whole lot of an impactful difference. Uh, I think it was, uh, what was it? 500 base luck or something? I can't remember off the top of my head, but either way, it wasn't enough, uh, and being able to consume those higher foods should make a bigger impact as you're leveling. I think that'll be great for those leveling players too. I do. Um, so one big piece of this change is also some changes to the fishing trade skill. Um, this ties into some shuffling of food we're gonna be doing with this update. Joel, can you talk to me about that a little bit? Yeah, um, so for those of you that really enjoy fishing, uh, legendary fish were excessively common, uh, almost so that they weren't that valuable. Um, or at least not as valuable as we'd like them considering they're a legendary item. Um, so we are looking at making that or, or putting that back into uh, cooking in a way that makes them the primary ingredient for the best food or at least most of the best food, um, as well as making them a little bit more rare so they kind of increase the value of those items so players can go out and seek these things that really want. And if you're a fishing uh, trade skill gatherer player that really enjoys that, you will be able to make a lot more money off of selling these uh, legendary fish to other players. And for those of you that don't really want to do that, there's still the options of some of the other food. You still have the brimstone food and you'll still have the expansion food that should help uh, fill in those gaps, but the fishing food will generally be the best with the exception con food as well won't require that at a high level. So you'll have alternatives if you want to just use kind of the um, generic food with con, which we consider generic because it's very versatile. Um, but if you really want that strength food, that dex food, you're going to have to find a fish or fish yourself if you enjoy it. Uh, go get those legendary fish. Yeah. Uh, can you walk us through like the roll rates a little bit and how we plan to make that change? Yeah, absolutely. So with the changes to fishing, um, basically how it worked uh, or works currently in live, uh, when you hit a fishing hotspot, um, you get a absurd amount of luck on top of it. And so what that was doing was basically almost every cast, uh, you would come back with a legendary fish. Uh, what we've done is we have adjusted the roll rates. Um, so getting a legendary fish, if you're not at a hotspot, uh, will be an exceptionally rare slash almost impossible occurrence at this point. So you have to hit your hotspots. And then on top of hitting the hotspot, you're gonna need to have fishing gear, a decent pole, gear, um, trophies will help as well, uh, in order to get a high enough roll to get a legendary fish. The goal for this is much like what we have for some of our other trade skills. If you wanna get these more rare materials, you have the gear, you put in the time, and you go out and you get your stuff. This way, the time that you spend on the trade skill has a return on value in the end. Um, it was always kind of weird to level fishing to 250 and then go get a you know GS100 stick and throw it in a hot spot and get yeah. a legendary fish. It just it, it, there's no payoff for, for your actual investment there. Um, so that's kind of the big thing that's going to be happening uh, with fishing to help make those legendary fish uh, come from people who put in the time. That sounds awesome to me, and I can't wait to find wear my nice uh, weird fishing hat and <laughs> exactly we're running through the world. It's going to be great. <laughs> can't wait. Um, so it's all exciting stuff. So if I'm a new player though, coming into the game, isn't this, we're removing so many recipes, won't that make leveling uh, cooking harder because we're losing so many first craft bonuses? No, actually. So one of the other big changes that's gonna happen from this is you're no longer gonna create one meal at a time. You're gonna create bundles of three. So you'll have to have uh, a little bit more on the resource side of things, but this really bumps up how much experience you get. And so with the increased experience, and the first time craft bonus. What you'll find is like, as you go through the profession, it is worth just kind of making one of everything to really get those bonuses and kind of push your way through. Mm -hmm. um, and it really does help fulfill the fantasy of, I'm a chef, I wanna cook all these different things, uh, versus one of the things that we had at launch, which was I'm gonna go make 20,000 basic meals and just level cooking and like, 
we've walked away from that big time. So I think the new uh, experience curves that have been set up, the uh, making three items instead of one, first craft bonuses, all that really help just kind of push people along and allow them to experiment with their, with their cooking progression. Absolutely. All right, so this has been a nice little deep dive into cooking simplification. I'm super excited about this. Um, what's coming next? So what's coming next? More trade skills. Um, as we've gone through uh, the history of New World with some of our updates, we have continually had, you know, added more recipes, added more gear. One of the big things for us, um, especially with, with cooking, was the brimstone update. So with the brimstone update, we didn't have level cap increase. We didn't have attribute cap increase either. And so what this created was this created a kind of a tier that was like tier five plus, if you will. Um, and it was this middle ground in between the original game and uh, the expansion. So going through with cooking, for example, and shuffling some of these around uh, and looking at our other trade skills, we're gonna be simplifying and kind of moving some things around. Uh, good example, a relatable example I can make to this is armoring. Uh, when we launched the game, armoring had your uh, armor that was uh, heavy emphasis on elemental, heavy emphasis on physical, and then balanced. When we set up the armors for expansion, we just did a balance set. We're gonna be going back, we're gonna be cleaning those things out. Don't worry, the appearances will still be available in some way or another. Um, but we really wanna kinda cut all this down, rework the uh, XP curbs, make sure that it's still you know, enjoyable to level, but we don't need, you know, 17 different shirts. Um, jewelry is the same thing, as you all saw in the expansion. Uh, with uh, jewel crafting, we had a ring, we had a uh, necklace, and we had an earring, where if you look at the uh, original version, there's, I think there's 17 versions yep. of each. Yep. And so there's just, we can do better. And so that is what this is, uh, a step forward in cleaning that up, just to have a, a better, cleaner experience for the player. Awesome. Well, I'm excited for all of these. Um, I know my inventory will thank you. <laughs> and I cannot wait to open up these crafting menus and being able to see immediately like what I want to craft instead of scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. scrolling, scrolling oh man, scrolling. I scrolled past that time with Sharder. Let's go back to that one. Ah, yep. oh, there it is. OK. Yes. Oh, yeah. now I'm missing an ingredient. Let's go back to the trading post. Figure out what it is, right? Yeah. And, you know, uh, I think Rune Glass is another one that is just, there's so much stuff for one system. Yeah. So there's a lot. So rest assured, we're looking at it. And uh, it's going to be getting a lot of, uh, a lot of TLC. All right. Uh, I think that wraps up then this episode. So thank you both for joining me. Of course. Uh, today's community question, which trade skill are you most excited to see simplified? And what ideas do you have for us? And why is it furnishing? And why is it furnishing? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> if you like what you've seen here today, please like and subscribe. And we'll make sure to see you all in Eternal. Awesome. Thanks. Within the lore of the game, does the OPR door count as corrupted due to its diabolical existence, ancient, as it currently lives way past its expected lifespan, lost because it can be brought back to life many times, or angry earth because it's a fusion of wood and ore.